Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the set of the Tanya Joy Show. We are so glad to see you here today. We are also known as, if you're watching us on Blessed News Network, as Beauty for Ashes with Tanya Joy. That was how the show started. That was the original name. And it was getting confusing because I do so many different kinds of things with this. But um, we kind of changed it to just the Tanya Joy Show. But you may know us as Beauty for Ashes. And I will just add, this whole show is based on Isaiah 61. That was where the whole concept came from that we are called to you know, help the poor, set the people free, bind and heal up the brokenhearted, the whole 61 verse, and then that we will see God turn the ashes of our life into something beautiful. So that's kind of the foundation of, of what we do here. Um, but we are just glad to see you. And you know, many of you, you've watched me for a while, you follow what we're doing here, and you believe and understand that our world is pretty upside down right now, right? Between current events, between spirituality and things going on in the spirit realm, between our government. I mean, it's not just here in America, it's around the world. Everything around us is kind of upside down, like we're in a snow globe that's being shaken. That's kind of how I usually explain it. Well, today I've got Mark Matheny here, and I didn't even check. Mark, I apologize if I screwed up your last name. We'll confirm. But he is here to discuss all of this and more because he has such an in-depth knowledge of so many things that are going on. I'm going to give you his bio when we come back. But today is Monday, January 22nd. I'm Tanya Joy, and this is The Tanya Joy Show. Okay, well, we weren't shocked. Over again. Now, welcome back to the show. As well, I'm so excited to have you both on the show. And I know we had such good uh, feedback and reception. General Flynn, what an John, honor. Joshua, Joshua tracked me down in a big tent of about 4,000 people. How are you? I am doing so great. Hello, everybody. Thank God, I am wonderfully great. Hello. Thank you very much. Because... What is prayer? I'm just doing. You know what I mean? And it, I'm thrilled to be here with the two of you. <laughs> Me too. Like, and that's who these crazies, these evil ones. It is. You said it right. Good job. Perfect. All right. The Gibson sisters. We are so excited to have them on with us on Resistance Chicks today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's time to rise. These people that get higher up. How? Sometimes I've thought. Well, these are glory days and not gloomy days. Like I love it. <laughs> You know, you know, it, it, it kind of works. Awesome about the tour is people like you. Good. I love the applause. That's cool. <laughs> there we go. Thank Hi, you. Joy. Everybody, welcome. We are so excited. Are you ready to get the show on the road? Let's go. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Well, my guest today, Mark, he's a veteran and a researcher as well as a Messianic Jewish believer. He breaks down current events that are leading to world government. I've had the opportunity to meet him over on the Awake Nation. He's a regular guest over there. He's awesome. He's always, I love logging in early just so I can listen to what he's saying because he's got such depth of wisdom and insight into the days we're living both spiritually and culturally and governmentally. So without further ado, Mark, welcome to the show. Hello. I uh, hope I can live up to all that now. Whew, no, wonderful. it's awesome. Did I say your last name right? Is it? Uh, it's Matheny. Matheny. And, yeah, Matheny. But that's fine. Right, uh, at the Awake Nation, it took them a couple episodes to get it correct as well. So, <laughs> so. Well, you know, I was like, I didn't even think to ask. I probably would have always said Matheny or Math something like that because I wouldn't have put that extra E sound in there. But now yeah. I'm going to try to remember Matheny. It's awesome. Right. Well, it's just so great. I know we've actually never, we've never been on the show really together over on the Awake Nation, but mm -hmm. I always try to log in early and get to hear what you're saying. Cause I often come on right after your segment on Fridays and it's just fascinating all the things that you talk about. So give everyone like your background since you're new to this channel. Okay. First. Well, um, you know, I 
my first job was the military. Um, I served overseas in several countries. Our unit was involved in Operation Desert Storm in Iraq in 91. Um, I've also, uh, back here in the United States, have uh, done everything from I own my own company building custom arcade machines with a warehouse that employees that would uh, ship all over the United States. Uh, I've been an uh, assistant store director at Meyer, worked there for 12 years. I've done just a lot of different things. Um, and back in 2008, really, is when I started really paying attention to geopolitical events, what was going on around the world. And I felt more and more that, you know, our governments and our media was not giving us uh, the, the full unfledged truth or giving us portions of it, uh, but slanting it to whatever desires they had. And uh, being a biblical student as well, I started to, you know, want to do shows and uh, commentaries and writing that would uh, talk about this biblical fulfillment uh, in the context of uh, political events and uh, figured that way, even people who were not necessarily religious, uh, who would be interested, would watch. And then as I did it, I would, you know, one man sows, another man waters, and then the Almighty gives the increase. So I figured this would be a way for religious people to see the political aspects and political people to see the religious aspects kind of a mixture. And that's basically what I've been doing. It's amazing. Uh, and, and you grew up Jewish now have, have, has your family always, is your family all Jewish messianic? Um, no, I you uh, say, and I apologize if I say that wrong. They were not religious at all. Um, just, you know, a lot of Jewish people over the years, uh, when they came to the United States, uh, shed their, uh, religions and things to pursue, you know, just, life and also maybe anti-Semitism and stuff. Um, wow, so, really? Yeah. So, and for example, my last name, uh, Matheny, most people say, well, is that sounds Italian. And I tell uh -huh. them, well, in Hebrew, it, it used to be M-A-T-H-E-N-Y-A-H-U, Matanyahu, which is uh, similar mm -hmm. to Netanyahu over in Israel, but Matan in Hebrew means a gift. And Yah is the, the poetic form, short form of the name of God. So yes. Matanah Yah or Matan Yahu would mean the gift of God or God is my gift. Um, you could look at it either way. Uh, so um, that's basically what it is. Um, and so that, how did you end up getting to where one you really dug in and learned because it sounds like you wouldn't have necessarily um, been taught your roots from a spiritual perspective. What was that yeah, journey like? Well, I'll tell you coming out of the military, uh, after I came back, I had a lot of problems and drinking and went through divorce and gotten some trouble. And, uh, I'll say I already did my seven years in the wilderness, if you will. And during that time, I was able to get my mind together and think about what life was about. And I knew that we had Jewish roots. So I called a rabbi that was nearby and he started to come to visit and see me. And, um, you know, so I basically, uh, wanted to get, uh, get right, you know, if you call it, get right with the almighty. And so as I started studying and things again, you know, I knew that, uh, the root of that would be uh, the foundation would be the almighty, you know, uh, and that's basically what it is in a nutshell. I just uh, had a lot of time to, I went to a, a low depth in my life to the point like where <laughs> kind of like, kind of like Job in a way I lost everything and, um, and attempted a suicide one time and wow. failed. Thank goodness. <laughs> wow. And I said to myself, man, I'm not even, I can't even kill myself. Right. You know, oh, thank goodness. But it came to that point and uh, yeah. never tried that again, believe me. Uh, so luckily it was a fluke. Um, but then after that just went into, um, serving the Holy one, you know, to, yeah. to 
uh, understanding what life is about. And, uh, and it, it says that you should cling to the almighty for he is your life. So with me, uh, it's not about, um, I, I, I don't, it, it gets deep, but it's not about just knowing the almighty. It is whether you know the almighty or not, it, you know, in the new Testament, the Havrid Hakadasha, the new Testament, the, the uh, I think it's Paul that says it, or one of the apostles, one of the writers says that even if you should deny the Holy one, he, he cannot deny himself. Right. And, um, so, you know, I heard someone say one time, you know, if everyone rejected God, would he not exist? Um, no, he would still exist. We just ultimately would not exist. <laughs> we would right. then fail. Uh, so um, we have to have emuna, which is faith in the Holy One. Um, that word emuna has uh, connotations of being faithful, but also the word omen means truth or so be it and so emuna and omen they, these are cognitive words that mingle together so truthfulness and faithfulness they abide together um and you have to have that to to live it, it you know that is our life and uh we're seeing this fabric fall apart in society you know i was just looking at it we are seeing um the the destruction of humanity in a sense um you know there's a biblical verse in one of the psalms that says if the foundations be destroyed what would the righteous do and this is this is the globalist attempt they know that if they can destroy the foundations of righteousness the pillars of truth let's say then they can build upon it their deception and that's exactly what they're they're doing so as i was researching what was happening i i started to look more so to uh not the bottom but i wanted to go to the top and try to figure out who who is at the top of this one of the big things is um you know you've got organizations like of course the united nations obviously you have the world economic forum you have the council on foreign relations the trilateral commission uh the royal institute of international affairs the Bilderberg group and a lot of these groups, especially like the Bilderberg, for example, was more of a conspiracy theory, people would say. And uh, usually when their meetings were happening as far back in the early 60s and so on, um, I think it was at Bretton Woods when they first started, uh, they, you know, they were very secretive and uh, it was really organizations. It was really billionaires and multi-billionaires around the world who have a lot of influence coming together to push, um, you know, policy, worldwide policy. And so with the more you break it down, the less uh, mystical it sounds, uh, the less theoretical it sounds, because it is based on truth. But obviously, uh, in my opinion, a lot of these alternative news organizations and people out there, uh, they get into you know, wild and wacky conspiracies. And what that does is it waters down and muddles the truth. So I think a lot of these organizations are set up by, by places like the CIA, the, the FBI, you know, it sounds conspiratorial, but they admit it basically that they monitor right. and infiltrate organizations. And then what they do is try to convolute them or co-opt them or confuse them. Uh, and so this is what's happening. So what I've done is in my shows, try to break these things down and show people on a more sensible, intelligible level based on Bible and then backed with documents and videos and things that convince them like, hey, you know, this isn't so nutty. This is this is some real yeah. stuff going on. And so your show you've got on Rumble. I want to make sure we just talk just plug that real quick while we're still yeah. talking so that people know um, you, and people can follow you on social media under sick Semper Tyrannus news, sick, like S I C Semper Tyrannus news. So for everybody that's listening, we'll have the links below as well. How often do you do your show? Do you do your show every day? Um, you know, it's uh, I, I don't have a specific time and that's okay. the thing. I don't, I don't always do live. A lot of my stuff is pre-recorded. 
Yeah. Um, occasionally I will come on and do a live broadcast, but I don't have a set time right now just because I do a lot of stuff. And then, um, so what I've done is like right now I'm working on a video called the death of Messiah. Was it on a cross or on a pole? Because, you know, you have groups like the, um, you know, the watchtower, the Jehovah's witnesses and others dispute whether it was a cross or a pole. Um, and so, and so I'm going into a lot of the historical basis of it and the spiritual side of it and so on working on that. Um, and I have done some other shows. Um, one recently was a documentary that's on my rumble called, uh, net carbon net zero, the real war against humanity, where I explore this whole idea of global warming. Interesting. Yeah. Now, so you'll, you, you'll take your topics, you'll research them, and then yeah. you'll put out teachings, ultimately deep dives that go, here's what this is really about. Here's the yeah, background. Yeah, to kind of yeah, go nice. through it where they can be carefully set up and collaborated. That way, when you watch it, I can I can make sure that these facts are verifiable. Sure. Um, and, and if they're not, and on my shows, one thing that's usually clear is that if I say, I will say now I cannot confirm this, but these are some reports coming out, you know, and I'll, I'll cl make it clear that uh, I'm not sure, but these are some interesting fat, you know, things that are coming out and then I'll revisit them. Um, but I do a lot of stuff on basically what's happening now with the border, with mm -hmm. the financial system, with the wars that are taking place, uh, Israel, uh, especially and in the Ukraine. And I've done a lot of commentaries on Ukraine war and Russia and what it's really about, what their objectives are as well. Yeah, We're, we're going to talk about that in the second half, because I know you've got a lot of, of knowledge on that. And, you know, of course our media has just kept on going, you know, and we've always got something new in the media to uh, distract and point a finger somewhere else that's still going on. We need to know and pay attention, especially in this year of 2024, what is going on, especially right, right sure. now. You know, uh, I want to make a point to everybody. It's interesting because, you know, Ephesians 6, 12, you know, when it talks about we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and high places, principalities and powers. It's interesting because if, if, people out there haven't done this yet, go and look up the Geneva Bible verse in Ephesians 6.12. The Geneva Bible came out before the King James Version, 1599. It was basically banned. <clears throat> and, excuse me, the uh, text says this. This is interesting. I looked it up the other day. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against worldly governors of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness, which are in high places. The King James Version always makes it allude to the fact that it's only spiritual. And I, before I had seen Geneva's Version, I'd always say to people that it should say, that we, for we wrestle not only against flesh and blood. Yeah. Uh, but really, as I saw the Geneva Bible, I said, well, I was correct, even though I wasn't sure. I always felt that way. And so the Geneva version, that verse does show us that we do fight against worldly governors and spiritual wickedness at the same time. And a lot of them are invested with spiritual wickedness, you know? Yes, that's right. And so there's a lot of people right now going against the Jewish nation. Um, and we have all these theories, the Khazarian Jews, which I did a show on to show people that this is debunked and it's a myth. Um, the Khazarian Jews are debunked? Yes. You, you, oh, well, it I would is love a, to talk more about that too, then, because I'm very new to understanding a lot of that, and right. I have been a, I've been uh, not attacked. I've been encouraged from both directions. You need to understand this, or you need to understand this right. kind of thing. Well, let's do this. Let's take a quick break, and then let's finish talking about that because I'm okay. very curious about that as well. So, hang tight, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging with us today. Um, this is such a great conversation, and we're going to probably have Mark back again so that we because he's got so much information. Um, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. I want to remind you of these awesome spray vitamins, the Verve spray vitamins. Go over to the website. 
Use our code TANYAJOY. These things are amazing. The energy one is one of my favorites. I do a couple of sprays a few times a day. It You could get off your Adderall. You know, a lot of people are wanting to get off their big pharma drugs, which you should. They're not good for you. Use this. This will give you energy. It will get you through the day. And it's natural. There's no bad fillers in it. One of these with our code breaks down to about $20 and it's a month supply. Go over to the website, pick up all the ones they have sleep. They have your daily vitamins, everything. And then also stay tuned because we love to also focus on the importance of making sure your finances are set up, especially in this world we're in. And the person that I work with and the person I recommend is Dr. Dr. Kirk Elliott. So stay tuned, listen to these couple of commercials and we will be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Tanya Joy from The Tanya Joy Show, also known as Beauty for Ashes. And I want to take a quick minute and talk to you about my new favorite sprays. This is by Verve Vitamins. Now, I want to show you this one in particular. I've got three here that I use on a very regular basis. One is Sunny, it's called. Let's see if we can see it. And I'm going to show you a quick commercial. This is vitamin D3, and it is amazing if you need to be in the sun and get those extra vitamins. This one is Energy. These are vitamin sprays. You do seven sprays in your mouth, and it takes care of your vitamins. You can travel with them. I mean, these are small. They're the size of a pen. You can stick them in your purse. But this one right now is what you need to get. This is called Cold. It's vitamin C and zinc. I came down with a little bit of something right around the new year, and I started spraying this. I actually used it three times a day, and you guys, it's less than five days later, and it is gone. So you need to check out Verve Vitamins. Stick around. I'm going to show you the video, and in that video, it's going to show you the website to go to. You will get a discount with our code, Tanya Joy. so be sure you check this out. This is going to change your life. I'm telling you, these are amazing. government-induced inflation, taxes, rising interest rates, political instability. All of these can have a crushing effect on our investments, often causing the stock market to go down. But they can also cause gold and silver to go up. Hi, this is Dr. Kirk Elliott. Buy gold, buy silver, buy now, but buyer beware. Precious metals companies are not created equal. As a PhD economist, I have been in the financial, economic, and precious metals business for three decades. The philosophy of my firm is people over profit. I encourage you to read my bio to learn more about me at kirkelliotphd.com. Now is the time to own physical metals in an IRA, 401k, and outside of a retirement plan. Don't let the government destroy your hard-earned assets any longer. Call 720-605-3900 or visit KirkElliottPhD.com. You're still looking good. I'm still feeling good. You know, I've got all your MyPillow products. Mattress topper, bed sheets, MyPillows, towels, slippers, blankets, sleepwear. Dog whoa, bed. whoa, Charles. Everyone now can get MyPillow products at huge discounts at MyPillow.com. That's right. Now's the time to go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to take advantage of our three-in-one sale. We're bringing you exciting new products, overstock specials, and closeout deals you won't find anywhere else. For example, when you buy one of our brand new MyPillow 2.0s, you get another one absolutely free. And with our overstock sale, you save 50% on our luxurious Giza Dream bed sheets. That's as low as $29.99 for the best sheets ever. And with our biggest closeout special, you get our all-season slippers for only $35 or our sandals and slides for just $25. Quantities are limited, and once they're gone, they're gone. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 
We are having a great discussion with Mark Matheny. I'm going to remember his name correctly. You can find out more about us and the show here at TanyaJoy.tv. Watch us daily, 414. Um, actually, we're right now kind of focused on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm in the studio, so we're not filming and creating new content on those days. But you can find us Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 414 Central. That is for Esther 414. Perhaps you were created and brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. All right, let's bring Mark back in. All right. So before the break, we were going to start talking about the Kazarian Jews. And I know we want to talk about Ukraine too, but yeah. give us your, your information on this because I'll, I've been studying about this, trying to understand it myself. I'm going to give a, a real condensed, but uh, very uh, elaborate at the same time. It all dates back to 586 BC when the um, Assyria came in and took and destroyed the first temple. You had the 12 tribes of Israel. Of course, 10 tribes went into captivity. Predominant tribe that was left was Judah. You had Benjamin and the Levites. And so the area in which uh, first century uh, Messianism, you know, the, the, the early, the, the followers of Messiah, Yeshua and so on were in the land of Judea. And it was called Judea because predominantly the Jewish nation had come back only. You got to remember all 12 tribes of Israel were not Jews. It was one tribe called Judah or Yehuda. And they later became the predominant tribe after the exile of the 10 tribes. So they started to be called Yehudim or Judeans or Jews is where we get the term. So... <clears throat> It, it nowadays, the term Jew would comprise any Israel, uh, Israeli or Israelite. You know, any of the 12 tribes that would come back would probably just mesh in with the term Jew. And so after the destruction of the temple and Christianity spread, um, there was a lot of persecution against the Jews from about 100 AD to 300. <clears throat> and uh, they forbid a lot of the Christians to have Hebrew scriptures, to read the Torah, to keep Shabbat, to do anything Jewish. Constantine said, let us have nothing to do with the most hostile rabble of the Jews. So then during that time around the 1600s, 1666 approximately, there was a guy named Shabbatai Zvi who came up and proclaimed himself a Messiah. He was a Jew. Um, and a lot of people followed him, but he, he taught a perverted version of the Torah. He basically said everything that the Almighty allows, he forbids, and everything that the Almighty allows or forbids, he allows. And so he he really turned Judaism upside down. He had followers who were called the Sabbateans. And he later uh, renounced Judaism and converted to Islam. <laughs> so he was a false messiah. But from that, came what they called Sabbateans or what we call labor Zionist now. So there is a group of Jewish people who are more so traitors to the true faith of the Bible, and they have taken positions of power, yes, but they were primarily uh, loyal to uh, Catholicism or the Vatican. And I know this sounds crazy, but if you do the research, you have after the Reformation, of Martin Luther uh, when he protested against the Catholic Church, nailed the 95 Thesis to Wittenberg uh, mm -hmm. and, and broke away from the church, uh, the official Roman church, uh, the Romans, the, the, the Jesuits were, was then created and the Jesuits were created as a response to that to try to bring back Vatican domination, Catholic domination. The word Catholic means universal, incidentally. And uh, so from that, around the 14, 1500s, um, you had breaking from the Jesuit priesthood was uh, 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 Adam Weishaupt, who then created the Illuminati in 1776. And uh, so you go from there and those guys then came forth. And what they're teaching is Marxism. They're teaching uh -huh. the, the teachings of Karl Marx and Engels. And, and th these are the labor Zionists. So it's not Israel per se. It's the government of Israel. It's the labor Zionists in Israel who are uh, condemning Israel, who uh, you know want to make it a secular state. 
and and have infiltrated in different groups. So we can't really attack Israel. It's just like the United States is a good country, but we have a corrupt government system within it that we need so to weed out. That makes a lot more sense. That is kind of how that that's kind of the conclusion that I understood, right? Yeah. But some and that of was the in a very condensed. Yes, yeah, some <laughs> of those actual details I didn't understand. Those I didn't know how it all ties in because that's it's new to me. Yeah. Uh, but I'm the type of person that usually. I can understand the big picture and then it right. takes time for all those pieces to yeah. fill in. Um, and I have a couple shows on my rumble channel that explain those things. If you, you know, you go to it. Because it's really important for people to understand because yes, this, there is a war a hundred percent. There are innocent lives that are being attacked and lost. Of course, just like is happening here in America and just like it's happening around the world, our governments have become so corrupt. Somebody, um, I posted this the other day and uh, it's Deuteronomy. I'm sure, you know, I think it's Deuteronomy. It's either Deuteronomy 16, 28 and 29, or else it's Deuteronomy 19, 28 and 29. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to look uh -huh. it's, and it's about the end days. Um, So I don't think it's 19. I think it's 16. Um, And it's fascinating because it talks about how the, um, it talks, it, it basically mentions how in those days you will have aliens that come into your land. Okay. Maybe it is 19 because 16 doesn't seem to, I'm like looking this up as we're alive. Okay. Um, but it, it is fascinating because why is it? No, but it can't be that. So maybe it's 18. Let me just do an actual search. It's basically saying, cause I don't want to re I don't want to, um, I don't, Oh, it's 28. Okay, I was totally off. It's it, oh, it's not totally. Deuteronomy 28, 43 to 45. And if you look at, now I don't have the Geneva version. I need to get a Geneva That's version. That's okay. It says, the alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower, and he shall lend to you, and you will not be able to lend to him. He will be the head, you will be the tail. That's what's happening in our right. governments mm -hmm. all around us with with the immigrants, the, I don't even like calling them immigrants. I hate to say that, but the ones that are coming in illegally, um, yeah. that's what we're seeing right now, you know, and that's what's happened amongst all of our governments. Right. And, and so that's what I tie into, because if you go into, um, the way back 1974, uh, Henry Kissinger wrote NSSM yeah. 200 and it talked about how they were going to use, uh, food and population uh, control measures, uh, using sterility and, and, and different measures to yeah. kind of keep population levels low. But also this, if you go back into ancient times, for example, when the temple was destroyed and the Assyrians came in, what did they do? They took the Israeli people out of there and then they put foreigners into that country. And what it does is it, it breaks down the cohesiveness of that country in Babylon, they did the same thing. You pull these people out of a out of a, a familiar area and then put them in an unfamiliar area. And what it's doing to the United States is it's breaking down the cohesiveness of the United States. Um, so if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? The founding fathers said that the Constitution is only, you know, made for a moral and just righteous people, uh, and it's based on Judeo-Christian uh, religion. So if you bring foreigners in that. Ha and, and I'm not attacking these people for coming. I don't blame them. It, most of their countries are really bad off because of globalist measures um, mm -hmm. and what they're doing to these third world countries. But Maurice Strong, who was a UN Secretary General, uh, he's the one that started the unsaid meetings and, and talked about climate change and all this. Basically, stated that they need a world government system. And he said, uh, it, you know, most sovereign countries will not agree to these policies. He said, so what we have to do is basically collapse these industrialized nations, and then we can then merge them into a form of world government. All of this is recorded. All of this is documented. Um, you can read it in the in the papers of the United Nations and so on. So this is not a, a theory that a conspiracy theory. These are facts. Um, and so they're using replacement migration to come in yes. because people that are coming into the country, and no disrespect to them, they're just humans too, but they're coming into our country. They don't have the love and the and knowledge and the understanding of how our right. country was developed and what it means. 
So the, the second and thing this is, is biblical. I mean, the thing is, is as well, this is biblical. This is, yeah. you know, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. And there really isn't when you if, if the church, the people who are the church, if they understood what was actually in the word of God, if they actually studied the word, they would see this has been going on since the very beginning. I mean, this right. goes all the way back to the very, very beginning of time. And if the church would become who she's called to be the bride of Christ, understanding and living the way, you know, it, it would change a lot of things. Right. For example, this, let me just show you this. This is, uh, this is from the, the border control, uh, border, uh, you know, the, uh, customs and U S protection. We seen a, it says that we've seen a 100% increase, uh, in, uh, infiltration of the country compared to 2019. Now, we know who was in office 2019. We yeah. know from 2016 to 20, uh, we were doing exceptionally well until, you know, they took, did the, yeah, uh, they the whole over. scenario. I don't know if yeah. I can say it here. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I don't go on YouTube, so I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the pandemic as scenario. Right. But also it says uh, last month alone, they had a 40% increase compared to September 2021. Um, they are bringing in now look at this since Biden took office 7.5 million encounters nationwide and and 1.7 million known gotaways. What's now, that? Also in this report, they're showing that, getaways, there was is a, that what you said? people who have gotten into the country, they didn't catch 1.7 yeah. million. Getaways. And out yeah. of that, they said in 2023, 169 individuals whose names appear on the terrorist watch list. These are people <sighs> they caught. 169. Yeah. So we think about 1.7 million people who've come in that didn't get caught. Who are these people? Yeah. And so I did a show called is, is, is this a, a Trojan horse? Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I, they're bringing in Chinese nationals. They're bringing in nationals from all over the place. My opinion is as they create these wars and we have to send us troops overseas at some point, we also then have our defenses down in the U.S. And we have all these nationals in the United States that could then conceivably start uh, what would be, you know, more of a civil war. Now, yes. most Americans understand we cannot afford to have a civil war. But if we have a false flag event and they create it, then while that happens, you've got China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, um, a lot of these countries now. Um, it, it basically aligning against the United States. Yeah. So, and against Israel, you know, so this is, uh, and the, I mean, that's what it looks like, doesn't it? Doesn't it look yeah. to you that that's kind of the, that's where we're, what would you say? Do you think that we're headed towards that? You know, at least that's what they're trying this year. Cause they've got a deadline. I mean, something's, well, something's happening between yeah. now and January. You know what I mean? I, think they're trying to figure out what they're going to do because they've tried so many, you know, different uh, allegations against Trump and they've lost on everything. Even the Epstein files that have come out now and the list are showing really that Trump had nothing to do with this guy. Yeah. In the early times he did, once he figured out he was a slime bag, he, he dropped him like a, a, a hot rock or something. And yeah. So they can't get him on that. They, they're they not going to get him on a January 6th because all this information is now coming out showing that it was more of a Fed surrection than it was an insurrection. Yep. And they can't really tie him to that. And uh, so and he's still in the polls. He's still winning. Yeah. So they know that they've got to do something. And so the two things coming up, well, three scenarios is one, a massive war. And I don't even know even if they do that, how they're going to still try to keep Trump out unless they try to escalate this war to the point when he gets in to then blame him for everything. You know, that could be a scenario and they, you know, they could try something that way or, that would um, be interesting. or they would, um, they, they can do election fraud again, which I'm sure they'll try, but this time I think they're going to have a harder time because so many people are onto it and uh, so many States are taking measures against it. The third thing would be a JFK scenario where they have to get rid of Trump. And so you start to see the illusions in the news where they're saying he's got to be eliminated, you know, and then they go, oh, well, we didn't mean that. Well, they know that people listen and they know they can retract it later, but they throw that out there. And then you get some psychotic on uh, psychotropic drugs or MK Ultra. Because yeah. if people don't understand that 
MK Ultra is a real thing. It's still going on. Uh, if you go to the CIA.gov, you can find the history of it. Um, I can't elaborate on it here, but it there are Manchurian candidates, I believe, still being programmed by the CIA 100%. and other agencies that we have no name for. Yep. Um, so we have all these scenarios. And uh, so the biggest thing is uh, standing on righteousness, getting yourself together yeah. uh, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Um, I'm 54 years old. Um, I, you know, I still work out. I still do martial arts. I study my Bible. I'm more like a Maccabee Jew. You know, I'm ready for the uh, Romans to come in again and I'm <laughs> ready to fight. Um, so another thing, too, to study is the book of Maccabee and to study uh, the, think about the book of Maccabee. And I'll do some shows on that sometime because that's what they did. They had to fight against the Greeks that came in who wanted to defile their temple, wanted them to give up their ways, take on idolatry. And yeah. this is essentially what these elites like you've all know a Harari and them are saying, there is no God. We're going to be God right. and so on. They have that Lucifer the, spirit, the Luciferian mindset. Yeah. And the Maccabees yeah. that's in the Apocrypha, isn't it? Yeah, it's in uh, the first book of Maccabee. Now, yeah. in, and, and it's funny because that, uh, you know, uh, in you can find it in the Geneva Bible. I think they have all 15 apocryphal books in the Geneva Bible. Yeah, huh. the first book of Maccabee is a pretty accurate one. Second book, uh, the third and fourth may not be as historically sound, okay. but uh, the first book of Maccabee gives you an idea of, uh, it it kind of has shadows of revelation and the abomination of desolation, the shikutzim shomem that comes in and violates the temple and how they have to flee into the wilderness and fight against the Greeks and Antiochus Epiphanes who comes in and sets up Zeus Olympus in the temple. Mm -hmm. So you see these shadows, they fight, you know, and then they liberate the temple and that's where you get Hanukkah, Hanukkah from, um, it's not, uh, it's a uh, it's more of a civil new year, uh, civil holiday in Judaism. It's not an official holiday, but it's one to commemorate the cleansing of the temple. And in the New Testament, the Bible says that Yeshua was in the temple in winter and it was the dedication. Mm -hmm. So he was there celebrating possibly Hanukkah. So even yeah. Yeshua, you know, would have celebrated Hanukkah uh, in the sense of acknowledging it as a day to that the temple was cleansed and a miracle happened. Naska Dolha Yasham, a great miracle happened here. So those are some things to think about. But as, as believers, people, you've got to um, keep your mind set on the almighty. He says, uh, you know, the, the mark of the beast is a, a mark in your hand or your forehead, but the almighty already gave you a mark back in That's Deuteronomy. Right. It says that you shall bind these Torah upon your head and they shall be upon your hand. Uh, so you, you're going to receive the mark of the Holy One or you're going to receive the mark of the beast. And so we have to keep our minds and, on the Almighty. And that is such an interesting, I love that you brought that up because I've, um, I've, you know, as I was studying, I kind of noticed that one time and I'm like, you know, it's funny because the the large, the church buildings, right? The, the majority of the church itself, right. they don't even, it's like they they don't talk about that at least about like, you guys look at the, the everything the enemy does is a copycat. He can't right. be original. So he's going to say like, if we don't understand what was in Deuteronomy, when God right. said, when the almighty said, you will have a mark, I will have a mark on your forehead and your hand. That's what right. he's meaning. Then we can't fully comprehend this end times mark of the beast type thing. And, and it's exactly what you said. You, you either keep the word of God and, uh, and abide by his guidelines or you have the other mark. I mean, it, it there's not an in between, people. Right. You got one or the other. That's what's going on. In the end, you know, it starts and it completes. God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so, right. I love that you brought that up. Now we have a few minutes left. Do you want to talk? A, a, do you have anything else you want to elaborate on the Ukraine? Uh, but the, the Ukraine um, uh, scenario. Uh, it looks like uh, NATO is preparing. Uh, there's a lot of reports coming out that they're they're doing these military exercises and drills. In my opinion, they're preparing for a possible conflict with Russia. You know, Russia, um, their goal, as Putin said, was to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. And, um, and, and, you know, I believe that whether you like Putin or not, if they, the Russia has a right to defend its borders, just as we have a right to defend ours. 
And if you don't understand the whole conflict between the the uh, Ukraine and the Donetsk and Luhansk region and everything, I've got some videos on that on my show. You could break down and watch. But the the Ukrainians were persecuting the uh, the Eastern the the Russian pro Russian separatists after they broke away from Ukraine. The United States then started under the Obama administration funding them secretly. That's why Biden and Burisma and all that was over there and Hunter Biden. And they were uh, they were uh, extorting a, a known criminal over there. And so this is the reason that uh, Biden went over there to try to stop the prosecutor, because then they started investigating Burisma and all of this. So this is a big conflict, but it's really about trying to weaken Russia. There was a uh, RAND report that came out. The RAND Corporation said that they had plans to weaken Russia. So this conflict is really to try to to economically break down Russia, but it's failing. Russia has now aligned with China. China understands it. So they're working together. Now India is starting to. We have big problems. And um, the person who came in to try to stop all of this was Trump. And this is why they attacked him. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of this world, because I've called you from this world, the world will hate you. Trump wasn't a perfect person. But look at all the prophets of old. They were not perfect either. And I'm not saying Trump's a prophet, but he was a man who came in and said, look, we need peace. We need to stop these wars. When they ask him, who do you, whose side are you on, Ukraine or Russia? He said, I want people to stop dying. Yeah. That's a profound statement. Yeah. That's something that people need to understand. And Trump has, you need to understand that whether you, you vote who you want to. But I'm telling you, I think overwhelmingly people need to support Trump this year. I do too. I do too. Be on every ballot. Uh, and yeah. if he's not on those ballots, go and write them in and exactly that they honor. Exactly. Him. Yes. It's going to be yeah. real interesting to see. I mean, because obviously, like you said, you know, as we conclude here, how, you know, these different options that they might use and, you know, they're going to cheat their, tr- I mean, look at this is all part yeah. of the cheating. Yeah. When have they ever, well, other than Lincoln, right? Lincoln was not on the ballot in many States either. And he still won. Right. But I mean, that's where we're at. You guys, again, History repeats itself. The Bible tells us that. History tells us that. People forget. And I mean, the Bible is very clear. Way back in the book of Exodus, it says that the, and even it's in Genesis a little bit, the Israelites, God's people forgot to remember. They forgot to remember what God did. And because of that, they didn't teach their kids what God did. They didn't pass it down for generations. And before you knew it, they were right back in the same situation. And that's where we're at. We are, we're in one of those generations where unfortunately we're stuck at the end where, you know, we're not at the beginning, but, but right. we're also in the process of moving into the beginning of the next era, which is exciting. Cause then we kind of get to be part of both, I think. Right. But he also tells us that, you know, if, if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and turn and pray. Yeah. He will heal us of our land and he will heal our, our, our minds and on hearts that's and right. spirits. And that's the biggest thing is uh, uh, clinging to righteousness in these times. Uh, that's the biggest, the biggest way to protect yourself. That's right. You know? So good. Mark, where give everybody again, where they can find you. Uh, you know, you can look up six Semper Tyrannus news, all one word, just as you see on the screen, it means thus always to tyrants. It, it alludes to death to tyrants. Uh, and it was, uh, and some people say, well, you know, what's his name? John Wilkes Booth used it, but in, in, in theory, it's just, it means death to tyrants. We need to squash tyranny and, uh, uphold liberty and righteousness. So you can find me there. Um, and like I said, I'm at the awake nation as well. And hopefully I'll be at the Tanya joy show every once in a while. Yes, so, I would love it. Yeah. Cause I'm, you've got so much wisdom and I love, um, studying, studying the roots of the Hebrew, the Jewish culture, understanding that's a very new thing for me just over the last couple of years, really when the Lord started pulling me back to going, you have got to get in the word. You've got to understand. And once you really start understanding and reading the word, you realize that our Christian Western church, we can't, we have to go back to the roots and understand the Hebrew and what really happened and what this was really based in. So yeah. The Protestants broke away from the Catholic Church, but they didn't in many ways, and they need yeah. to break away fully. And so that's another reason that's I do these shows out. is to show you how to break away from it 100%. Uh, it well, is a awesome. city that rules of the kings of the earth. 
That's right. Well, we're going to have to talk about that more. Yeah, we'll we'll put you back on the calendar for next month, okay. and um, that would be awesome. Thank you. Hang right. tight, Mark. Y'all, thank you so much for joining us. So uh, we already talked about the scripture earlier in the show, but this was the scripture I had picked for the end of the show, Deuteronomy 28, <coughs> 43 and 44. The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head and you shall be the tail. Y'all, the scriptures way back in the beginning told us what we were going to be facing right now. Anyway, thanks again for watching. As always, you can catch us on the Blessed News Network, on Rumble, Cloud Hub, any of those places, 414 p.m. Central every, well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for new content, put it that way. And follow over on Instagram and TikTok because I do post my coffee talk morning clips over there. So God bless you all. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Hey friends, you already know the answer to this, but we'll ask you anyway. If you stay away from your favorite junk food for a month and then go back to supersizing it, will your health improve? Well, that's the thing about change. To change, we have to be as consistent as possible. And when we go back to an old habit, it's not the end of the world. We just get back at the new habit. Before you know it, Real transformation is evident to you and others. That's why we offer a bunch of helpful bonuses when you subscribe to Kingdom Fuel. Kingdom Fuel is our complete nutritional meal shake. It's the simple start to a transformed life, and we'll auto ship every month so you don't run out. You'll receive two free shaker cups, free access to our video courses, and a monthly call with us filled with practical inspiration. Just see the link below or on your screen and subscribe today. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Beauty for Ashes with Tanya Joy. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave us a comment below. Lastly, if you've enjoyed today's podcast, share with those who came to mind. Be blessed and remember you were created for such a time as this.